Say what you will about Joe Rogan, but one thing cannot be denied. The dude can talk. Knowledge is power. I'm getting handsome now, aren't I? As I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> I'm in heaven. I don't want to fly. Uh, where did you come from? Be quiet. That's impossible! <laughs> Greetings, dudes, dudettes, and all those aspiring to be such things. I am Dude the Wise, but please, just call me Dude. Today we will be discussing 10 Joe Rogan podcasts that I believe have legitimate cultural value. If you've only seen clips of the Joe Rogan experience, or have formed your opinion on the show by only paying attention to CNN's coverage of it, then you probably think such a list preposterous. What could this big, bald toe of a man possibly have to offer American culture other than dangerous, drug-laced misinformation? If you abandon your preconceived notions moving forward in this video, then I think you will see that over the course of his career as a podcaster, Joe Rogan has had more important conversations with important people on his show than anyone else in America today. This list is by no means exhaustive in that I have not listened Listened to every single Joe Rogan podcast in existence, but it is a list of episodes that I guarantee are worth taking the time to listen to. So without further ado, let's examine the list. <sighs> Cheers. Episode 1646 of the Joe Rogan Experience features David Holthouse, who is a journalist and documentary filmmaker. Now, the primary purpose for him coming on the show was to talk about his documentary series, which is called Sasquatch. About the first 59 minutes of the episode is devoted to talking about this series, and it's interesting. Mr. Holthouse basically explains that his series is about a possible murder mystery involving a rumor that a Sasquatch was the murderer of these people who were involved in a part of the country known for marijuana drug cartel violence. Long story short, Mr. Holthouse does not believe that the Sasquatch was the, uh, was the murderer, but he thought it would make for a good series because it was a story that he reported on, and it gave him an opportunity to talk about the war on drugs. Starting at minute 59, though, the episode goes from typical Joe Rogan fare, Sasquatch, weed, you know, the whole thing, to one of the best episodes of the Joe Rogan experience ever. Mr. Holthouse, here at the 59 minute mark, begins to tell the story of how he was raped as a seven-year-old by an older boy who was 17. This story is hardcore, but it is Absolutely fantastic, because Mr. Holthouse is a great storyteller. He explains how this event shaped him into the really quite extraordinary journalist he is today. He explains how the trauma associated with this horrific crime being committed against him allowed him throughout his life to blend in to criminal underworlds, because they knew there was something off about him. I don't want to spoil the whole story, but it is very culturally relevant because pedophiles are still around, and it's important to hear a survivor's story. After this story, Mr. Holthouse takes the podcast in another direction, where he begins to talk about how he was an undercover journalist in white supremacist groups, and this part of the podcast is nuts. He has some crazy stories about almost being found out by real skinheads and almost being murdered by real skinheads. I mean, it is absolutely bonkers. The stories and the things Mr. Holthouse uncovered about the actual real white supremacist underworld in this country. I don't want to spoil any more, but you get the point. The man, like you, you look at him, you, you hear him talk and you go, man, you know, I wish I could have the cool stories that you have. Episode 1169 of the Joe Rogan Experience features Elon Musk, and I believe this interview was the first truly long-form, public, casual interview that Mr. Musk ever did. He has been on the JRE several times in the years since this initial episode, but 
This episode, I still think, is the best one for a number of reasons. Joe asks all the questions that an ordinary dude would want to ask Mr. Musk. Joe and Elon talk about all manner of things, from artificial intelligence to flamethrowers to electric car manufacturing to uh, social media. I mean, it, it, the, the, the content of the podcast is interesting, no doubt. But in my mind, the true merit of this interview is that it's more than any other interview I've seen with Mr. Musk truly gives the average viewer a good glimpse into how Elon's mind works. I also find that uh, since this interview was several years ago now, uh, it's very interesting to see Elon Musk as he was before he became uh, the profoundly influential cultural figure that he is now. I mean, back when this interview was filmed, he was no doubt very influential in the um, technological space, but he had not taken on the role he has taken recently in the cultural space in that he did not own Twitter. He was not the chief twit, but he is now. And I just think that if you are interested in assessing the person that runs that show, this interview gives you a solid picture of what that person is like, what makes him tick, and what his um, uh, overall disposition is. So maybe you should give it a watch. Episode 1309 of the Joe Rogan Experience features Naval Ravikant, who is a entrepreneur, uh, investor, and a man with a great wealth of wisdom on how to remain happy while being filthy rich. This podcast is obviously culturally important because you, as well as the dude, want to be rich. But neither of us want to be rich and miserable. We don't want to be Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Ravikant is in no way, shape, or form a Mr. Scrooge, and what he has to say about avoiding Scroogedom is absolutely valuable to the culture and to just life in general. The philosophical insights Mr. Ravikant has into not just uh, money making, but in to how society should run, why society is ill in various ways, how we can fix society, those insights as well as his just jovial personality makes the podcast a truly pleasant and genuinely fulfilling listen. The dude clearly has a background in Buddhist uh, thought and philosophy, but I mean, this man is very well-rounded. I mean, uh, there's a whole portion of the episode where he talks about how he reads books. At any given time, he is actually reading about 70 books. <laughs> you know what I mean? The man just picks up books, reads parts of them that he gets something from, thinks about that part for a day or two, maybe flips to another page or flips to another book, and that's how he reads. And honestly, I myself don't like that idea of reading. I almost feel like I'm disrespecting a book whenever I do not finish it. Um, but this Mr. Ravikant has, he expressed a breadth of knowledge and understanding that I often do not feel uh, that I have. I mean, he was able to recall so many brilliant quotes. Like there was one quote from Confucius he brought up, uh, and the quote was, uh, every man has two lives, and the second one begins when he realizes that he has only one. No matter who you are, man, woman, uh, you know, alien from Mars, you will get something out of this podcast. You will uh, find some piece of wisdom, some piece of life advice, financial advice, or spiritual advice that will uh, be of benefit to you. Episode 1035 of the Joe Rogan Experience features Paul Stamets. First of all, you are exposed for the first time probably in your life to a man who literally wears a hat made from mushrooms. Blew my mind. Additionally, uh, the man wearing the mushroom hat, uh, Paul Stamets, is an incredible source of knowledge, uh, scientific knowledge, when it comes to all different types of mushrooms. Whether they be portobello mushrooms, lion's mane mushrooms, uh, psychedelic mushrooms like psilocybin, the man knows it all. Before watching this podcast, I had no clue that there were mushrooms that could aid in the development of uh, the preservation of memory, such as lion's mane mushrooms. I did not know that there is such a thing as, a, uh, as mycelium. Uh, a mycelium network in our soil. 
I did not understand that fungi, various types of fungus, they, they form a network for plants that is essentially the internet for plant life. I mean, it is absolutely mind-blowing. Mr. Stamets explains that, um, you know, without the mycelium network, plant life would collapse, uh, you know, all our whole ecosystem, everything we do would collapse. He explains why it is so important for us to preserve our old growth forests and ensure that the mycelium networks there, the fungus and all the different species that rely on that fungus, uh, you know, are preserved for not just the sake of wildlife, but for the sake of our lives. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm wondering if I can vacuum off your recording. I, I am recording, yes. Okay. I'll be finished uh, quite soon. Yes, yes, I will. Uh, I, I will let you know as soon as I am done uh, recording this video, yes. Gracias, senor. Uh, that was the dude's mate. Now, what does all this have to do with culture? Well, first of all, uh, what I've described as far as the health benefits of mushrooms, uh, you know, both for the environment, but also for the individual consumer, who say eats a lion's mane mushroom and it improves their memory. Uh, you know, those, that's obviously culturally important because the health of the creatures in a culture, they, you know, <laughs> it's good for them to be healthy, otherwise the culture might collapse. So there is that. But the other aspect of this podcast that I think is absolutely culturally significant is whenever Mr. Rogan and Mr. Stamets discuss the subject of psychedelics. The portions of this podcast where they talk specifically about the psychedelic nature of certain mushrooms are mind-blowing. I mean, it's, it's really uh, incredible. At one point, uh, Mr. Stamets describes how using psilocybin mushrooms cured him from stuttering, which it's just an amazing story. You'll have to listen to it, because I'm not going to try and regurgitate it here. But suffice to say, you will have your jaw on the floor as he tells this story. To me, I see this issue of psychedelic drugs and their eventual legalization as uh, inevitable. And we will either do this in a responsible, informed way, or we will uh, do this in a reckless and stupid way that will lead to the War on Drugs Part 2. And I don't think anyone wants that. Uh, and so I think that, you know, episode 1035 of the Joe Rogan Experience is a, uh, a, great, uh, a great piece of conversation that can help our current conversations in the culture surrounding psychedelics and what we as a culture ought to do with them. Episode 1459 of the JRE features Tom O'Neill, who is a journalist and author who for the past 20 years has written a book called Charles Manson, the CIA, and the Secret History of the 60s. This podcast is absolutely bonkers. What I will say is this. What we have been told about the Manson murders, the Manson family, and that whole horrific episode that happened in 1969. What we have been told is not by any stretch of the imagination the full or completely true story. Over the course of three hours, Mr. O'Neill explicitly shows that, in all likelihood, Charles Manson and the murders associated with him were either influenced by or were in some ways a direct byproduct of experiments and operations carried out by the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. Many of you might be thinking, oh dude, oh, I thought you were wise. I didn't know you were a conspiracy theorist. Ordinarily, I'm not. But when someone makes a solid case and provides evidence for their case, I listen. And that is precisely what Mr. O'Neill does in this podcast. You will have to listen to it yourself or read his book. But I promise you that if you do either of those things, you will walk away thinking about Charlie Manson and the Manson murders in an entirely different way. This podcast has obvious cultural implications in that um, 
you know, number one, Charles Manson became the uh, poster boy for everything that was wrong with the hippie LSD culture back then, and obviously psychedelics and LSD are you know, big topics of conversation once again in our day, so the podcast, uh, you know, discusses that whole movement in detail. But also, the podcast is culturally important simply by virtue of the fact that, you know, the Manson murders, that whole debacle that went on back then, you know, that was one of the most culturally impactful events of the last century in America. And if what we've been told about what happened there is not actually the full story, then, well, that's kind of a big deal. The Dude highly recommends episode 1459. You will get a lot out of it, and you will be thoroughly freaked out and fascinated by the end of it. Episode 1258 of the Joe Rogan Experience features the former CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, his chief content uh, moderator specialist, Vijay Gard, and Tim Pool. Tim Pool is a complicated figure, in my mind. Um, on the one hand, I think he's dreadfully annoying. His YouTube channel is scaremongering to the max, civil war is here, wow, that's basically what all of his headlines are. I, I honestly, I don't watch him much anymore because I just feel like he does the same clickbait uh, journalism that a lot of uh, YouTube uh, video, you know, political commentators do. Um, I, you know, I often will find myself agreeing with the actual contents of his video at times, but at other times I'm just like, man, you are trying to scare me so that I continue watching the video and I do not appreciate it. With all that being said, I will always have respect for Tim Pool for what he did in this podcast. What you get to see in episode 1258 of the JRE is Tim Pool tear apart the idea, once and for all, that Twitter is somehow not a politically biased organization. I believe it was at the 52 minute mark in this episode where I just burst out laughing uh, with joy at the point Tim ends up making. He is able to make such a compelling and convincing case that Twitter's misgendering policies in their community guidelines are explicitly politically biased against the conservative point of view with regards to sex and gender, that the chief content moderator at Twitter at the time, Vijay Gard, who is on the podcast, literally replies with, thank you for your feedback. Oh, it's a fantastic moment. The reason for why this podcast is so culturally relevant is probably completely obvious to you by now. Social media runs our culture, and this podcast gives ordinary dudes like me and you the opportunity to see inside the flawed and deluded minds of the people who run these organizations and who attempt to control our cultural conversations. So I do recommend that you check out this episode. I think it is enlightening in a number of ways. I will say, uh, in defense of the Twitter people, at times they do make some valid points uh, when defending their actions. And I would say that uh, Tim Pool is not perfect on all points of discussion in the podcast. But on the most important points, I think he absolutely eviscerates the opposition in a way that is <laughs> a spectacle to behold. Episode 606 of the JRE features Randall Carlson, who is a master builder, geometrician, geomythologist, geological explorer, and renegade scholar. Mass extinctions caused by cataclysmic events such as supervolcanic eruptions, asteroids, worldwide floods, these are all things that are discussed in this episode. In relation to these cataclysmic events and mass extinctions, Mr. Carlson has some fascinating, fascinating things to say about the cultural and political subject known as climate change. Some other fascinating cultural subjects are discussed in this podcast, such as sacred geometry and the history of Freemasonry, but this one subject of climate change is why I felt the need to put uh, this podcast specifically on the list. The thing that makes Mr. Carlson so interesting to listen to on this subject of climate change is that uh, really in about the first hour of this podcast, he pulls up graph after graph, data point after data point, showing how not only the climate has changed over the past 50 to 100 years, but over the past, you know, 
500 to 5,000 years or even longer than that. I mean, the man is able to show how he, he, he's able to show in this podcast the bigger picture of how the climate has changed over the centuries and the millennia. I mean, it, it's absolutely fascinating. He's able to show that long before humans ever were contributing to climate change, the climate was changing and it was changing drastically and rapidly in ways that we still don't understand. The point that Mr. Carlson makes that I think is particularly worth considering if you are of the uh, left-wing uh, side of this debate is that if we only pay attention to man-made uh, causes of climate change without taking into account all the other variables that affect climate and have affected climate long before humans ever came along, uh, then all of our projections, all of our theories about the effects of climate change 50 to 100 years down the road are going to be wildly off because we uh, are, are taking stands on uh, incomplete data. As Mr. Carlson says at some point in the episode, our understanding of climate change is in its infancy. So it would actually be unwise for us to uh, look at the future and act as if we know uh, that there is apocalypse on horizon when we don't understand the climatic uh, apocalypses of the past that had nothing to do with us. And if you are on the right wing uh, side of this debate, then this podcast is also, uh, you know, something that will bring nuance to your perspective. Because the matter of fact is, is that it's undeniable, as Mr. Carlson shows, that the climate has changed in the past and is changing now. I mean, you, you cannot refute the data. Um, what that means is, as Mr. Carlson says, uh, is up for debate. What, is, what its actual effects will end up being, nobody actually knows. But it's important to look at his data and recognize that climate is changing and that humans are having an effect on the climate. Uh, Mr. Carlson is emphatic about this. And so uh, I think listening to him with his very, um, I would say, unorthodox but grounded perspective is a worthwhile endeavor. Of all the podcasts on this list, this episode may very well be the most mind-blowing, so I do recommend that you check it out. Episode 1724 of the Joe Rogan Experience features the singer and songwriter Jewel. Now, Jewel is a very, very interesting lady, a very cool lady, I would add. Not only is she a highly experienced musician and artist, but she is an incredibly wise woman as well. Her life story is absolutely bonkers. Joe Rogan does a fantastic job of asking all the questions that he needs to ask of this lady. He pulls out from her this very complicated story with her starting her life in Alaska because she is the daughter of the star of the show Alaska The Last Frontier. She fled home whenever she was in high school because, um, well, home life was getting a bit toxic. Daddy was uh, getting a little uh, forceful with the fists and the slaps. Uh, you know, he was beating his children and she wanted to get out of there. And so she fled home, became a homeless person, and you know, through a series of events, I don't want to spoil it, but Jewel eventually became who she is today. But man oh man, did she live a life before she was famous. Jewel, through her various wildlife experiences, has turned her into, um, <laughs> by my estimation, an amateur philosopher with more wisdom than the professional philosophers at universities. I mean, the amount of life advice that she gives in this podcast is astounding and it's incredibly incredibly useful honestly there are just so many insights and uh, you know she she very correctly uh, talks about how as humanity has become disconnected from the natural world we have dis we have you know developed all these ailments that we did not have in the past these mental disorders these anxiety attacks you know all this stuff you know, she she's just i i think that she is an incredibly important person for not only young women to listen to, but young men as well, because her advice is applicable to everyone. If schools, parents, uh, and people of all ages listened to the advice that Jewel gives in this podcast and uh, actually 
put that advice into practice in their own lives and in their own institutions, then America, I absolutely believe, will become a much, much healthier nation overnight. Jewel is a jewel. Episode 1691 of the JRE features Yeonmi Park, who is one of the few survivors and escapees of the totalitarian communist regime that is North Korea. The only reason that this podcast is not number one on this list is because I did not feel it was as uh, directly culturally relevant to America as the number one podcast on this list. But with all that being said, I think this podcast may be the best all-around podcast on this list, in that it is not just culturally relevant to America, it is also culturally relevant to the entire world. I cannot tell Yaomi Park's story. Only she can tell it. What I will say of it is this. The story of Yaomi Park's life, of her childhood, growing up in the hellhole that is North Korea, it is one of the most horrific and heartbreaking things I have ever heard about. North Korea is a country where the entire thing is a concentration camp. You can't leave. She had to escape, you understand. And within this giant concentration camp, there are other camps that are more severe than the broad concentration camp that is the regime. And the stories that Miss Park relays about seeing people in hospitals with their eyes gone because rats had eaten them, and of children chasing the rats so that they could eat the rats because there was no food. These stories, when you hear them told by the woman who actually experienced them, I mean, you will, your heart will sink to your stomach. I mean, th this podcast, what I'm trying to say is it very well may change your life. It is a heavy hitter. It will, at times, crush you, but at other times it will make you laugh, because that's one of the other things that I think is so special about this particular ep episode. Joe Rogan is a comedian, and amidst the, you know, just depressing content of this interview, he manages to throw in a joke here, a joke there. He manages to bring some levity, some lightness to the conversation uh, so that his viewers can bear it. And I just, I think it, this episode is a great showcase of his talent as an interviewer. I just think that this one, this one is really, 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 really important. In my opinion, America is inevitably going to go to war with China. Understanding why we are better than China is something that you will also gain from this podcast. Yami Park explains in very uh, explicit detail that the only reason North Korea is as it is today is because China protects it and props it up. She explains that if China stopped funding North Korea, stopped helping North Korea, North Korea would collapse within a week. Understanding that, I think, is something that American culture could benefit from as it enters the void that is the future. So give it a listen, dudes and dudettes, and be grateful for what you have, for some people in this world have literally nothing. Episode 1419 of the Joe Rogan Experience features Daryl Davis. Now, who is Daryl Davis? Daryl Davis is a black R&B and blues musician who, over the course of his life, has managed to convert over 200 members of the KKK out of the Klan. In the opening 45 minutes of the podcast, Mr. Davis explains how, when he was 10 years old, he was at a parade and... Suddenly, he was getting rocks and bottles thrown at him by a bunch of white people. He didn't understand what racism was at the time, but when this happened, his parents sat him down and told him, those people hate you because of the way you look. And this planted a question in the heart and mind of Mr. Davis, which was, how can somebody hate me when they don't even know me? This question bugged him, as he tells Mr. Rogan. And... 
Lo and behold, years and years later, he found himself at a bar after playing a set, and a KKK member sat down next to him and started talking to him about music. And the story of all of the rest that is in the podcast relating to Mr. Davis's relationship with KKK members and converting them out of the KKK is unbelievable and insane. Throughout the podcast, Davis shows Joe the robes of former Ku Klux Klan members whom he had converted out of the Klan. It is astonishing. At one point, he produces a police uniform and a robe that was worn by a man named Robert White, who was a part of the Baltimore Police Department, while also being a part of the KKK. It's just really an astounding, astounding conversation because you realize that the only way that Daryl was able to successfully convert these white supremacists out of the ideology of white supremacy was for him to befriend them. If he had just, you know, called them dirt-eating scum, they would have never listened to Daryl. The key to destroying your enemy is to be their friend. Uh, Daryl Davis befriended all these white supremacists, and after being friends with him for long enough, they realized that they couldn't hate him anymore. This podcast both exposes you to black culture in Daryl Davis, and through him it exposes you to the uh, flaws and a uh, very sad reality of white supremacist culture. Um, and, you know, I, I just really think it is a, a key piece of art, in, in my opinion. This interview is art. It, it, it opens your mind to seeing the reality of the racial conflict in America being one that is derived from primarily ignorance and, um, you know, hatred due to the fear caused by ignorance. This is a podcast that I think every adult and young adult should uh, listen to and watch. I mean, it is really, really powerful and important stuff. And it is the solution to the racial problems in America. Daryl Davis's attitude towards dealing with white supremacists, befriending them instead of hating them right back, uh, you know, as they hate him. His methodology, his uh, just perspective is unbelievably valuable. And if every American across the board adopted it, well, dude. White supremacy would die, as would so many of the other harmful ideologies in our society. So there you have it, dudes. Ten Joe Rogan podcasts of cultural value. Ah. If you give any of them a listen, let me know what you think of them in the comment section below. And if there were some episodes that were not on the list, but that you think should have been on the list, let me know about them so that I can give them a listen. And if you are a new viewer of this channel and are curious about the origin story of his dudeness, then I suggest you check out the Dudist Reformation playlist, or at the very least, watch the video that bears my name. Here is a clip from Dude the Wise. While the dude was climbing the mountain of personal responsibility, the world was abandoning its responsibilities. Where did you come from? Be quiet. Please watch the full video if interested. I will leave a card and an end screen for it that you can click on, dude. And now, ladies and gentlemen, all I have to say is please like this video and subscribe while never forgetting that the true measure of a toe is not its length or its lack of hair but its ability to engage in thoughtful conversation.